looking at some of my acacia seedlings here to see how they're going, or how they're growing rather, if you like. That one's getting its feet in, just. It's very hot, and I did plant them a bit later than I intended, but they're doing all right. This is acacia floribunda. I, re I read online that this one contains, I'm not asp uh, espousing uh, taking drugs or anything, but this one contains uh, DMT in its uh, inner bark somewhere. And it's not illegal or anything, I mean the plant to grow it. Australia's national flower, Acacia pitelantha, it, uh, it has DMT in its bark or somewhere too. Australia's first people used to, some of them, some, uh, well they still do I think, yes I have seen them on, on, on television in a documentary, Australia's first people uh, did smoke, well breathe in the smoke from some types of acacia. I don't know if it was this type, this is acacia floribunda also known as gossamer wattle. I think it's also called silky or silken wattle. But let's have a look at another of my acacia floribunda. So I've got, I put in several, I've got about half a dozen. I used to go acacia pycnantha here, but it's a bit too dry for acacia pycnantha to be happy. Of course, they all vary in the amounts of DMT they contain. And I'm not advocating taking DMT as an hallucinogen. Someone wrote to me in one of my acacia videos before and they claimed that they claimed that the whole, basically they were saying the whole edifice of Australian Aboriginal culture was built on drugs like DMT, uh, entheogens as they're called. But I wouldn't know if that's true. That's what they claimed. I think it was somebody from America. They were claiming that Australian Aboriginal culture, the, dream, the land of the, the dream time and everything, was all basically due to ethnogens. Have I pronounced it right? ethnogens, hallucinogens and things from plants and mushrooms, whatever. I'm not an anthropologist, I can't tell you. I'm not a pharmacologist either. I'm not a psychonaut either. If you want to see psychonauts, go to Neurosoup or somewhere on YouTube. I'm not recommending taking drugs. I don't take anything. I only take coffee and um, tea, yes, and chocolate. Chocolate contains theobromine and caffeine, doesn't it? I do take chocolate. That's uh, Acacia floribunda, gossamer wattle. You can see, you can see that these Acacia floribundas, they are legumes and they're closed up for the night. All the leaves are vertical for the night, it's dusk now. And all their leaves are vertical. They've closed up for the night basically as a lot of legumes do. Incidentally, that's some type of Passiflora over there. I don't know if it's Passiflora incarnata, but from an entheo entheogenic point of view, well, some Passifloras, like Passiflora incarnata, contain um, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor that some people who take DMT, they, uh, they take a monoamine oxidase inhibitor with it. I'm not recommending that, of course. I'm not. I'm just telling you what I read on Wikipedia. I mean, information is there to be you. Oh, well, information is there, isn't it? And I'm just looking at the information. I'm not advocating drug use. As I said, I don't take anything, but I have an open mind about things. I didn't know people who used to take LSD 40 years ago. They used to inject it and take it orally. And they used to tell me how enlightened they were. But I noticed that they didn't act enlightened. That's what I noticed. I've noticed a lot of people who took LSD didn't act enlightened. This acacia floribunda is doing very well, but I've been give, giving it extra water. Look how lovely it is. Yes, I mean, a lot of people who... Uh, well, take the famous Zen writer Alan Watts, for example. He took LSD. And he was always talking about, uh, well, Zen enlightenment, wasn't he? But I noticed from what I've read of him, he was addicted, hopelessly addicted to vodka. So, you know, that's rather disappointing that whatever was in his LSD that he took, it wasn't sufficient to, to enlighten his way out of vodka addiction. I used to know some people on methadone who took LSD on the weekends and um, 
Whatever was in the LSD it didn't show them how to get off methadone. It didn't. Whatever, whatever enlightenment was in that drug LSD, it didn't tell them how to get un, unenslaved from methadone. It didn't. Last time I saw those people, 40 years ago almost, they were still they were enslaved. They were to methadone, and the likelihood of them getting off seemed uh, well. It didn't look like look very good for them. They might have prospered there for all I know. Of course. Of course you see people on the dance floor, don't you? Taking their party drugs like ketamine and whatever, LSD or whatever, whatever hallucinogens they're taking nowadays. And they don't claim to be enlightened. But back in the 60s and 70s you'd hear a lot about enlightenment and uh, LSD and people telling you how they were all enlightened. What's this? That's a little acacia floribunda, contains DMT apparently, just for interest. But um, I noticed that Gossipy people who took LSD, for example, still gossiped. People who were pathological liars stayed pathological liars. Jailbirds who took LSD stayed jailbirds. So I'm not convinced that taking an hallucinogen automatically enlightens one at all. And there was what? Professor Kripner, Stanley Kripner, he was uh, doing research to prove that LSD made people more creative. But I'm not convinced by the, all the hippies I knew that took LSD that they were more creative than anybody else. Indeed, perhaps the opposite. The people who were creative, I suppose, were the people who made the hippies' clothes. All those Indian people in sweatshops who did all that uh, stitchery for their Indian garments and all the Indian jewellery that was fashionable to wear back then. Someone was creative. But I haven't noticed that LSD does reform the personality automatically. I remember, yes, too, yes, one, one girl, she was, she was half Chinese and I didn't know much more than her about self-esteem back then. But she, I, looking back, I realised she didn't have any self-esteem about being Chinese, but she used to take LSD regularly and um, it's clear looking back that her LSD didn't tell her that. She needed, she had a basic self-esteem problem that she had to feel good about being a Chinese person. You know, she didn't have any self-esteem looking back about her Chineseness and her Chinese heritage. And uh, LSD didn't teach her that. So if it's an enlightenment drug, it didn't enlighten her about that. And I've, oh, well, I could go on about various people who behaved in uh, certain ways that LSD, you know, it just didn't reform their character, did it? It didn't. But they claimed it was an enlightenment drug. And you hear that. You still read that sometimes about entheogens, don't you? Look over here at Kitty, isn't he cute? He's not on any drugs at all, are you Kitty? Isn't he beautiful? A lot of people think I'm on drugs. <laughs> they do, they do. People have told me that I'm crazy. People who watch my YouTube videos, aren't you beautiful Kitty? Kitty, isn't he wonderful? See ya. Just a quick rant anyway. It's dusk and it's been raining and I'm walking out on the moor.